um, a very, uh, I think it would be fitting for Barb, a very unscheduled, non-scripted uh, <laughs> gathering of people who have been touched by her life. And I, I just am very moved at how many people were able to come given the very short notice. I mean, we just sort of decided to do this. <laughs> Um, I'm Rosemary Pelletier, and I've, I've known Barb in a few different, as probably many people, a few different hats that she wore. Um, and the, the process for the, the script this evening is simply, um, we have um, a person who is not here, who many of you know, Judy Murphy, uh, who definitely wished she were here, so she sent some words. And Sally is going to read those words to us. Uh, I believe, Tyler, you have some comments that you specifically want to make. And then the rest of it is just passing this mic from people to people to um, sort of introduce yourself and then to share whatever you want. Uh, given the number of people here, um, I would say to try to limit your comments, and I know that's not easy to do given how influential Barb was, um, but uh, just to limit them to a few, few comments. Um, Claude is uh, videotaping this, and if you would like a copy of the videotape, if you let him know uh, at the end of the evening and just sign something, he'll let you know how to get a copy of it. So probably post it somewhere. Um, so I think, uh, members of the family are here, and I just met them, so I'm not going to remember all the names. So I'm just going to go over with the mic, so you can just say who you are and how you're related to Barb, and I will put you on the spot for anything else. How's that? Okay. Oh, and whenever you take the mic, you need to almost swallow it, because if you, if you look at me where it is, Hi, I'm Cindy Wilson, I'm Barbara's sister-in-law. I'm Marion Wandry, Barbara's sister. I'm Dave Wandry, I'm uh, Barbara's brother-in-law. <laughs> I'm John Wilson, I'm her brother. Jeremy McIntyre's son. Gavin McIntyre, grandson. Savannah, you can <laughs> <laughs> get out of this. <laughs> to be the late, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Savannah Hunter. I'm Savannah Hunter. <laughs> Thank you. What? Oh, it's just. Okay. Jim's son. John's son. Okay. <laughs> Joshua, grandson. Okay. Is Ben just a friend, Lucille Hackney? Okay. Any other? Any other family? Brown, blank. Joshua's mother. Okay. Well, we are especially glad that you could come, given how quickly we decided to do this. Um, so at this point, I'm just going to pass the mic, and then I think after Sally and after Tyler, if you just sort of indicate that you want to speak, I'll bring the mic to you. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. um, I'm going to read a short statement that Judy Murphy sent. A tenure of great rock singer. <laughs> and, um, and I think everybody knows Judy was one of Barb's closest, dearest, longest friends. And she's very sorry she can't be here. She's in California right now. Um, this is from Judy. I regret that I am unable to be here tonight to hear your memories of Barb. But I think it is so fitting that we are honoring Barb while the Democratic Convention is in progress. I met Barb through politics. We worked together on many, many campaigns. She encouraged me to run for office and was my campaign manager for two state Senate tries in a race for state representative. She stuck with me through three losing races. She worked with me day and night through ups and downs. She was loyal. She was the best. Later, we toured Morocco, Greece, and Turkey together. While our group was searching the Medina in Casablanca for bargains, 
Barb was buying carrots to feed the donkeys in the courtyard. <laughs> she was a great travel companion. She was a wonderful friend who not once but twice drove miles in the middle of the night to pick me up when I was stranded. She never thought twice when asked to help friends, and she never expected any credit. In the two decades of our close friendship, we never exchanged an angry word. Barb was stubborn, and she was fiercely independent, and she was kind. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> she loved animals. <laughs> we shared a desire to change the world. She was a close friend, and I will miss her. And uh, this is from me. I, I met Barb through politics also, through volunteering, and eventually we became friends. I took her to see movies like Brokeback Mountain and Selma, and we'd go out for dinner where she always way over tipped. One of my favorite Bard memories is the time she tried to have George W. Bush declared a war criminal. <laughs> <laughs> they did it in Brattleboro and she wanted to do it here. She and about three other people went in front of the select board. Obviously, it didn't pass. <laughs> I valued her friendship and generosity of spirit. She always thought of other people first. She was caring, funny, accommodating, never complaining or demanding. She appreciated even the smallest gesture. I will miss her. I learned a lot from her and try to honor her life and work. And, uh, I have uh, one announcement, which is that Smokey, her cat, is available at Second Chance Animal Shelter if anyone is interested. And then there's a, there are photographs of Smokey on the, the table coming in. There's also copies of the obituary which Judy wrote, uh, which are, I hope you'll take a copy of. And uh, now uh, let me give this note to Tyler. I think I'd rather stand. Um, but I want to uh, talk about uh, uh, Judy's connection, Barbara's connection with uh, Glastonbury, because I think that's something that not many, not many people know about. Um, I was uh, heavily involved with, with that effort. Um, you know, back in the 1984, Madeline Tunin was elected governor, and she appointed uh, Barbara as the, uh, as the supervisor for the town of Glastonbury. It had been kind of a political thing if the Republicans uh, named a Republican in town and the Democrats named a Democrat. I remember uh, 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 Mary Jane Ellis was, had been one before, I think, under Governor Shannon. Well, anyway, Barbara took this very seriously, and the time came in 1987 when there was a very unwise housing project about, uh, proposed for Glastonbury. 16 single-family houses would have been built up there with a in a town with no town clerk and no school and a fire department and no possibility of insuring them and so forth. So she she was, you know, the supervisor uh, of, a, of an unorganized town in Vermont is, uh, has tremendous dictatorial powers. The supervisor is the board of select fund, is the school board, is the constable, is the town clerk, is, is everything except the board of listers. Um, so uh, she, uh, uh, on her own authority, she uh, went to the regional planning commission and they, uh, and they cooked up a, uh, a first kind of a boilerplate um, zoning ordinance. Uh, and, the, and then the, she declared, she declared as the Board of, uh, board of Selectmen, she declared that this, was, this ordinance was passed. And they needed a public hearing. And we had a public hearing and there were something like 56 people showed up for it. Uh, everybody was unanimous in favor of it. So, uh, you know, Barbara, for all the politics she did and all the, all the um, you know, call, calling people on the phone and asking do they want to ride and so forth. This is the only time that Barbara actually uh, was able to take an action as a, as a public official. And, <laughs> and, she really, and she really enjoyed it and, she, and, and it turned out so well. And then after that, um, oh, let's see, uh, uh, she became, there was a zoning board, the Glastonbury Zoning Board, Charles Yoder was chairman of it. Um, and I was on it, Ellen Barrick was on it. Um, and uh, we spent a lot of time refining this boilerplate um, zoning ordinance. And you know, after all, 
Um, Glastonbury has uh, 26,000, I think it's 27,000 acres and 26,000 of those are in the national forests. So we're only dealing with a relatively small amount of, of land. But, uh, but it's an important part of land that, that you know, could, have, could have gone to this housing project. Um, so we, uh, we spent a lot of time refining this uh, zoning ordinance. And when Charles Yoder died, um, he wanted this ashes taken, uh, sprinkled up at uh, Fayville. And that was done. And I became chairman of the Glastonbury Zoning Board. Um, and now um, Barbara has, um, has declared, and this is in writing, and she reminded me every time I've seen her in the last few years, that, that um, Jim, Jim Henderson of the Regional Commission and I are designated to uh, scatter her ashes in Fayville. And so Jim and I have we decided um, we uh, decided on the on the day of Friday, August 12, we can both get together. And uh, unfortunately, I'd like to invite anybody who wants to to come come with us. Um, but unfortunately, I haven't been able to get home, Jim, and uh, I, I don't know what time of day it is. So I guess I could say if you if you want if you want to join us, give me a call. <laughs> It's the little unorganized town. Okay, okay so anybody else want to okay. share some of hotels and everything up there? When I, when I first met Barbara, it was when I first ran for the legislature. <clears throat> Sitting next to me was this little woman <laughs> who said to me, Barbara, what do you need? I said, I don't know what I need. I've never done this before. <laughs> she was always there for me. Just always. When I think of Barbara, this is what I think of. Peace, justice, minimum wage, paid sick leave, civil union, and so much more. Barbara, Barbara dedicated her life to helping the underdog, to helping the vulnerable become part of the fabric of society. Senator Campion, who's here tonight, Dick Sears and I, Bill Botso, will be drafting a state resolution in Barbara's name, which we'll all sign when we get back to Montpelier in January. ago when I first heard that Barbara passed away. I was with a group of people. We all gasped. Just gasped. How do we manage Democrats, progressives as we are, without her in this world? <coughs> then I thought, well, I'm so glad she didn't hear Donald Trump the other night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, am I glad. And then I was so sad that she didn't hear Michelle Obama. Elizabeth Warren, and of course, the love of her life, Bernie Sanders. <laughs> so, we don't have Barbara to lean on anymore. We know she's on the side of the angels, and I see her up there. <laughs> you didn't care of her. <laughs> Thank you. Um, anybody? Why don't why doesn't the the person who's speaking just say it so I don't get up each time and just pass the mic? <laughs> uh, well, just as an illustration of the breadth of Barbara's interests, she and I and Judy Murphy took a trip to Morocco together. We had a wonderful time. But I also served on the Glastonbury Zoning Board with Barbara, and I have spent many hours over the years handing out literature. Uh, during various election periods up and down the streets of Bennington and putting lawn signs up in Shaftesbury and so forth and so on. And she just was wonderful to work with and was so enthusiastic always. She could talk anybody into almost anything <laughs> because she would care so much and work so hard and you just felt you had to help her. I, um Probably, I know I didn't know Barbara as long as most of you uh, did. 
uh, because I haven't been in Bennington that long. But I met her when I pretty much first got here. And I was really delighted to have met her because she had such a passion for civil rights and human rights and all that other good stuff that I love to work on. And I really, I have to say that she really inspired me um, to get involved with things around town that have to do with, well, a lot of politics, but other things too. And I love the fact that when we did the protest at Walmart for um, uh, Black Friday, Barb was one of the first people that definitely wanted to go, and I think she was yelling the chants louder than I was even, which I thought was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I thought was fantastic. And I have to, and I, I probably shouldn't share this, but I think Barb would want me to, that when there were a group of us uh, protesting up at the State House about health care, and we got arrested, and I came home, and Barbara called to congratulate me. <laughs> <laughs> so, who else would like me? <laughs> My name is Dan Lucy. I uh, guess my, my fondest memory of Barbara was the two trips that she went with myself and a number of chaperones with the Interact Club to Nicaragua. And uh, I remember picking her up the night that we were going to be leaving to head out on the bus to Newark Airport and her bags were just chock full of stuff. And I said, Barbara, what the heck you got in here? And she said, oh, I have stuff for so-and-so and stuff for so-and-so. And it was just packed full of goodies and maple syrup and postcards of Bennington. And when we got down there that first day, and you know, Barbara was walking the streets with the delegation, and uh, on every street corner, I would hear somebody yell out, Barbara, Barbara, <laughs> because there wasn't a natural translation of Barbara in Spanish, but they would all yell out to her, and she would yell back, oh, it's so good to see you. And um, you know, that was, that was one of her, her fond places in San Mateo. And um, I, I know that you know on, on the last trip her health was kind of failing, and uh, I watched her. You know I tried to make some accommodations, but uh, you know keeping up with 20 adolescents was was difficult for all of us. But Barbara was right there. She said, "No, I'm fine. I can keep up. I can keep up." And you know what? She kept up. So thank you. Hi, I'm Peter Lawrence, and I've known Barbara for a good 30 years, ever since I first came to Bennington. And for the last, oh, how long, 10, 15 years, the first Thursday of every month, we were meeting here with the Greater Bennington Peace and Justice Center, and she was um, one of the trustees. She also, I guess I'm gonna have to change the paperwork with the state, she was listed as our convener, and uh, now I need another volunteer. But um, she was one of the most vibrant people, part of us, part of the discussions, part of moving us to do things to make not only our community a better community, but also to further the projects in Somatia. And I know I speak for not just myself, but Dan and David and Mary Ann and Ann and Nathan and Claude and Andy, uh, all the people from the Peace and Justice Center about how much we're gonna miss her. Uh, also, she used to t always say when we were at functions, she'd say, Peter, I, I don't speak in public. You get up and say whatever it is. So Barbara, I'm doing it. You're coming to me. <laughs> but I also got a email today from Phyllis Kaplan, who was in Bali. And she asked that this be read today. And this is from Phyllis. I had a long and lovely history of shared activism with Barb, beginning in the 1980s. In a lot of ways, she was a mentor for Bennington politics for me. We laughed and schemed a lot. I last caught up with her when she was very ill and in the nursing home. 
I do not know the circumstance of her passing, but I hope it was not long and hard, although no one possessed resilience as Barb did. I hope her family and friends are all gathered, remembering her and telling stories about her. She was a unique presence in Bennington. Everyone knew this. She had the street cred that none of us had, not none of us having been born here. The, uh, she had, was Rip Rocks Bennington, but her practical stance was different as she was always a progressive person who did not waver. And I just want to add to that, I have to say, and I'm sure I'm, almost everyone else was thinking this same thing last night about how it's so sad that Barbara didn't live long enough to see our first woman president. But I'm sure she's up there cheering us all on. Who's next? <coughs> Hi, I'm Jennifer Wells. Um, and uh, I too um, have so many fond memories of, of Barbara, and especially through her activism and community uh, work here in Bennington. Um, I used to bring my young boys with me um, on various campaign efforts, and we would go into the offices and sometimes we would leaflet, but a lot of times we would phone call. And uh, I remember one time um, when we were phone calling and Miles uh, must have been, you know, maybe 12 and Otis was sitting there and um, he would, you know, as you know, read from a script. And Barbara said, Jen, why isn't Otis calling? And I said, oh my goodness, well, he's only nine. And she said, but nobody's going to know on the phone. <laughs> so uh, anyway, Otis started calling when he was nine. And uh, both boys have been involved in many campaigns since then. Miles traveled to Nicaragua with Barb and uh, actually visited her a couple times when she was um, in the hospital, when he would be back here visiting. And Otis is actually currently at uh, George Washington University, and he is at the Democratic National Convention uh, and sends his best. And uh, both boys, I think, really were inspired in their choices of, of uh, careers uh, because of their relationship with her. I'm Andy Shirky. Some say that indifference, apathy, and passivity are the great enemies of peace. Barbara was none of those things. She was active. I first met Barbara during the run-up to the Iraq War and on uh, March 20th, 2003, the shock and awe began. The next day, on March 21st, there were those of us who were active in the community who had tried to stir up public outcry against that outrage. We had very little success, I have to tell you. But there were those of us who were determined to do what we could. And on March 21st, 2003, we conducted a vigil, a protest, a demonstration at the Four Corners. Of course, we were all busted. <laughs> but Barbara was there among us. She was there and she stood tall. Amongst other things, she continued her activism and led the group in Bennington that called for the impeachment of President George W. Bush. She was successful to the extent that the county Democrats voted to impeach President Bush. <laughs> she was not passive. She was not indifferent. She was a rock solid activist. It was an honor and privilege to vigil, march, and protest with her.
Anyone else want to speak? Um, I guess the only thing that I would say is given who she was and still is, um, the best thing we can do to honor her is to be as active right now in moving her, um, her values forward uh, in tribute to her. And there's lots of opportunities to do that in the current climate. Um, I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to ask Dave O'Brien to, to do a few, uh, an, an, not an invocation, but a, the ending. I don't know what you call it. <laughs> and then afterwards, invite people just to mingle and uh, continue to share stories. But one last opportunity if anybody wants to say something before we do that. Um, please sign the guest book. So oh, yes, there's a guest back book back at. Sort of back there. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Cynthia Laughlin, and I don't remember exactly when I met Barbara. It seemed so long ago. It seemed like she was a fixture in the town, like, well, she was. Um, but uh, I, what I wanted to say and what struck me was that given her idealism and her commitment to activism, you would think that this would be a person who didn't have time for the niceties of you know, in interactions on, a, on an intimate and friendly level uh, during such things as campaigns when so much had to be done. But she was always there. I, I volunteered occasionally for some campaigns in the past. And you would come back to the headquarters and their bar would be saying, well, you know, there are some cookies in the... So in other words, there was, she was looking after her volunteers and, but, uh, the basis for all of that was her tremendously good heart. Not only was there a fighting spirit, but her heart was so tender and kind and good. I just had one more memory of her that was very typical. When she was up at Crescent Manor recovering from her first stroke, she would get out and walk around and around and around that place, the whole exterior, and it's quite extensive. And uh, she was just determined to get back on her feet, and she did. And every time I came into town, I would see her walking around the five block place from the street where she lived, still doing that to keep going. And uh, if any of us worked that hard, what a great world it would be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Mary Ann Carlson, and I would not have been elected to the Vermont State Senate without Barbara. I, I knew nothing, just as Alice said, <laughs> about what I was doing. Madeline Cuna just said, if we need women to run, go for it. Barbara was right there. Yes, Mary Ann, go for it. You can do it. And she just supported me the whole way, taught me uh, how to get out, how to knock on doors, how to be there and was always so welcoming when I would come back to the office exhausted and she'd say, you're doing a great job, Marianne. You know, <laughs> she just had that dedication, dedication in, in everything that she believed in um, and never stopped working for it. She was a true inspiration and I think we'll continue to be that. And I think it's really remarkable that we're all here right this moment as I'm probably Bernie at this moment is handing his delegates over to Hillary and the whole thing is gonna be such a wonderful, wonderful campaign. And as Rosemary said, we all have to get out there. And if we don't do it for ourselves, do it for Barbara. Thank you. Last, last call. You know Rosemary? I don't, <laughs> I don't know if people realize, but Barbara won the very coveted David Curtis Award uh, that was given to her in Burlington several years ago. That's a, that's, that was really impressive. Best Democrat in the World Award. <laughs> I can say one more thing. I wrote um, a memorial that many of you uh, copies of here. I was
was hoping to get in the banner today, but you know the banner today. I felt very strongly. I'm, I'm, I'm a writer, and I, I, I had to write what, what I did, so I hope that's, uh, that's appropriate. And speaking of the banner, I hope people saw the letter from Wendy that was in the editorial uh, two days ago, maybe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> I'm getting my exercise just like <laughs> Someone uh, just reminded me that on Barbara's last trip to San Mateo, um, they gave her a plaque with her picture on it honoring her. And it was, she's such a humble woman because the person who was head, the head of the San Mateo Social Commission mentioned all of these qualities of kindness and caring and how people in Somatillo loved her and she had made so many trips down there. And I'm watching Barb's face and she has no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> because she was such a humble, humble woman. Thanks. Which is part of why there's no plaque here with all the photos. I think I had, I went through all the stuff I have and I found two photos of her and they were both taken on the bus up to Mount Pelier to testify uh, with regard to the civil unions. Uh, but she made many of those kinds of trips. Yeah. But she was very self-effacing. I mean, she was never in the limelight. She was the, the behind the, the scenes person who was always encouraging people to realize their own potential. <coughs> um, okay. Thank you, Rosemary. Well, let me call us to a moment of silence and may we put our minds and hearts in a place of holiness, uh, in a space of understanding, a place of thinking about our Creator for Him as we understand, uh, as we remember Barbara this Spirit, we come together in this circle of respect and mourning and sadness and celebration to honor a woman who has brought great dignity and tremendous activism to our world, particularly in this town and in this state. We mourn we bring our prayers and concern to her family, particularly those who can be with us tonight on this historical occasion when we're soon to be honoring the first woman nominated as a Democrat nominee as president, we honor this historically wonderful and able woman who has left us. He said that it's not what you say that we want to be remembered for, but who we are. Barbara McIntyre has said much that we will remember. In your name, we ask for peace on us, on her family, on her, and in this, on this world. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Um, on much more mundane models, um, we'll put four plates on the counter back there for donations. There are representatives here this evening from each of the groups or the places that Barb had said and we were flowers, etc. to make contributions to them. Um, Brock uh, is one of them. The Bennington Peace Resource um, group is another and the Democratic
Democratic Party is a third. And then it was friends who put together the obit, so if you would like to contribute to the cost of, of that in this gathering, there will be an important plate there, okay? Nobody should feel obliged, but it's a way to do it, and tonight we can just send that, those contributions directly to the organization. So thank you very much. Please hang around. Please enjoy the life refreshments and uh, visit with each other.